What made a class clown's attention-seeking prank suddenly turn into a hazmat nightmare that cost his parents $3,000? In my chemistry class, there was this student named Jake who had an insatiable need to be the focal point of every situation. His disruptive antics during Mr. Peterson's lessons ranged from blurting out unsolicited trivia to producing irritating sounds during exams, clearly aimed at unsettling his classmates. Most of us had learned to tune out his attention-seeking behavior. When confronted, Jake would masterfully flip the script, painting himself as the victim of persecution. But during our 11th grade year, he orchestrated a performance that crossed an unforgivable boundary. We were in advanced placement chemistry, thoroughly engaged in Mr. Peterson's fascinating demonstration of acid reactions. The instructor was showcasing how various acids interacted with metals, producing vibrant color transformations and delicate wisps of vapor. For once, the entire class sat captivated, perhaps the very thing that triggered Jake's next move. Without warning, he launched from his seat, sending his stool crashing to the floor. The chemical fumes, he cried out, clutching at his throat with trembling hands. He staggered through the laboratory, his face flushing crimson as he gasped for air. I can't breathe. Something's wrong. I must be having a reaction, he choked out, his quivering finger aimed at the demonstration table. What followed was a masterclass in manufactured chaos. Jake collapsed beside the emergency shower, his body writhing in apparent convulsions as he emitted grotesque choking sounds. His performance prompted Mr. Peterson to immediately terminate the experiment, throw open every window, and contact emergency services while attempting to assist Jake. Minutes later, the fire alarm pierced through the building, triggering an evacuation of our entire wing. The scene escalated rapidly as paramedics arrived in hazmat suits, treating the situation as a potential chemical emergency. They came equipped with oxygen apparatus and specialized emergency gear I'd never encountered before. As Jake was whisked away in an ambulance, our school parking lot transformed into Command Central. Emergency vehicles, fire engines, police cruisers, hazmat units, and media vans converged on the scene. Jake's distraught parents arrived, terrified their son had suffered lethal chemical exposure. Faculty members found themselves under intense questioning from investigators, and discussions arose about suspending the entire chemistry program pending a thorough safety review. But I possess a crucial piece of information no one else had witnessed. From my adjacent seat, I'd observed Jake's pre-performance research. While pretending to pay attention, he'd been Googling chemical poisoning symptoms and studying videos of allergic reactions. I'd watched him scroll through searches for how to fake chemical exposure and analyze footage of seizures and respiratory distress. The hospital assessment revealed the truth. No trace of chemical exposure, no allergic reaction, absolutely no medical issues whatsoever. His elaborate hoax nearly cost three educators their careers over non-existent safety violations, and his parents were left facing a $3,000 bill for the emergency response operation.